Hello, sis D, and I'm back with another video. Well, this morning I was awoken to so many tweets and messages in my inbox regarding if the Xbox Series X is RDNA 1.5. Now, this is coming out of left field, and once again, the detractors are saying that the Xbox Series X is not the most powerful next generation console. Now, I'm hearing once again the RDNA 3 rumors that the PlayStation 5 has RDNA 3, the Xbox Series X, sure, it has RDNA 2 features, but it doesn't compete with RDNA 3, and when in fact the Xbox Series X is not full RDNA 2 because it's missing the infinity cache. Now, I didn't really want to do this video to be quite honest with you guys because I think this is a dead topic. The Xbox Series X is just a more powerful system than the PlayStation 5, period, end of story. Yet once again, I'm forced to lay the smack down on the detractors. Now like usual, I'm going to present the evidence to my case and you guys can make up your mind for yourselves and let me know in the comment section down below. Now first off, we got to start on the RDNA 2 features of the Xbox Series X. Now, Microsoft has confirmed the Xbox Series X is the only next generation console that will support all of the features of RDNA 2. So it will support mesh shaders, it will support variable ray shading, it gets all the other benefits of RDNA 2. Now the argument that's come up recently is that the Xbox Series X is missing the infinity cache and therefore it can't be full RDNA 2. Now this is absolute nonsense and when I explain it to you guys it will make absolute sense why the Xbox Series X X does not have the Infinity Cache on it. Now, first of all, the Infinity Cache was invented for the RDNA 2 GPUs that are on the PC. Now, they tried to get the cost down on those GPUs, so their memory interface or the memory bus is 256 bits. Now, this is a little bit too low for 4K resolution, so they added the Infinity Cache so that they would have the appropriate bandwidth needed for higher resolutions. Now, the reason why the Xbox Series X does not have Infinity Cache is because its bus is 320 bits. So its memory interface is sufficient for 4K resolution. This is why the Xbox Series X doesn't need the Infinity Cache that is found on the RDNA 2 GPUs. And once again, the Infinity Cache is to help with the memory bandwidth, which is needed at 4K. The Xbox Series X does not need that assist because it has a 320 bit bus. So this doesn't affect whether it has RDNA 2 capabilities. This feature affects the memory bus, which Microsoft's Xbox Series X is not affected by because it is 320 bits. Now the next subject I'm going to tackle is that the Xbox Series X lacks RDNA 3 features that are on the PlayStation 5. Now first of all, I'd like to know what these RDNA 3 features are that are on the PlayStation 5 because Sony hasn't detailed them, AMD hasn't detailed them, apparently it's just leakers that are detailing them, yet this console is coming out in less than two weeks. Now I'm going to tell you guys how Sony operates as a company. Well, what I've seen in my experience with Sony, they don't like to have the competition to have the leg up in any areas on a competing product. Now, if the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 had equal features, Sony would be touting the equivalent on their next generation console. They would be talking about an equivalent of variable rate shading and mesh shaders on their PlayStation 5, yet this is not the case. Sony is not talking anything about these features. Then I see some patents being thrown out and saying, look, look at this patent, this proves that this is on the PlayStation 5. Now I have seen a variable rate shading like patent for the PlayStation 5 that looks like it operates around software. Now, first of all, a software variable rate shading technique is never going to be better than a hardware solution. Sony's PlayStation 5 doesn't even have variable rate shading hardware 1.0 support, much less 2.0. So if they were to come up with a solution, it wouldn't be nearly as effective as the consoles. And furthermore, Sony has not stated that they have this technology on the PlayStation 5. We have seen no games in action that show this technique being used. Therefore, it's safe to say this is not on their next generation console, hence why Microsoft was able to say that they're the only next generation console using the variable 
double rate shading technique. Now, as far as it comes to mesh shaders, these are also not present on the PlayStation 5. Now, I see some other reports that they have a geometry engine that's so advanced that it doesn't need mesh shaders, that it's beyond the mesh shaders. Yet, in Cerny's deep dive on the PlayStation 5, he spoke nothing of mesh shaders, only of the primitive shaders. Now, if you know the technology, you'll know that mesh shaders are a evolution of the primitive shaders. Yes, you use the primitive shaders and the mesh shaders together, but the point being is that the PlayStation 5 does not have this on its silicon. Now, it has been confirmed that the Xbox Series X has primitive shaders, it has mesh shaders, it has a unified geometry engine. Now, I've told you guys on the channel before that Microsoft waited for their full RDNA 2 features on their silicon. That's why they're coming in a little bit hot with all of the tools for the developers. The bottom line is Microsoft waited to get all of the RDNA 2 features that were coming on AMD's upcoming PC GPU. Now, we know for a fact that the PlayStation 5 started development earlier than the Xbox Series X. We know that Microsoft waited to get all of the features for RDNA 2. So how in the world would the PlayStation 5 have more advanced RDNA features on its console when Microsoft waited to the last minute to get the full feature set of RDNA 2? Furthermore, where are these features on the PlayStation 5? Why have they not been mentioned in any type of deep dive, in any type of documents? Why has Sony not spoken about these features or AMD when the console is coming out in less than two weeks? I would think that Sony would want everybody to know all of the features that are on their PlayStation 5 and if they have a leg up on the competition, which is the Xbox Series X. I'll tell you the reason why, because this is not the case. The Xbox Series X is just a more powerful console. Some people just need to let it go. It is what it is. If we don't factor in all the extra features that the Xbox Series X GPU has of RDNA 2 on it, just the GPU being larger alone, having more CUs is a reason to know that the Xbox Series X is more powerful than the PlayStation 5. As well as machine learning that is present on the Xbox Series X that has not been confirmed for the PlayStation 5. Now, my Microsoft has confirmed that they have hardware acceleration for machine learning on the Xbox Series X. I don't know why people are not reporting on this. They're acting like hot chips didn't take place, but it did take place and Microsoft revealed that they have hardware acceleration for machine learning on the Xbox Series X, something that has not been confirmed for the RDNA 2 GPUs that AMD is bringing out later this month for the PC, something that is also not confirmed on the PlayStation 5. Yet I'm not sitting here touting that the Xbox Series X has RDNA 3 features. It has some custom features on there that are not a part of RDNA 2 and machine learning acceleration is one of them. Now I always get the same argument, you're not an engineer, you're not a programmer, you don't know what you're talking about when the matter of the fact is that I do understand what is being said here. Nonetheless, I'm going to quote Digital Foundry. Now, this is from Alex over at Digital Foundry, and he posted this on one of the forums. Now, he goes on to say that my hunch here is that the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S has a more complete programmable front end with mesh shaders versus the old primitive shader type. The hardware variable rate shading and the technical hardware required for the next version of Tiled Resources which is called sampler feedback and I think without saying positively for certain that this is why Microsoft was so keen to make these features so prominent in their pre-release material for the Xbox Series X. It was their hardware features advantage that they knew it so they advertised it. Just like how they advertised stable clocks as a thing before Sony described the dynamic clocks to the public. Will these advantages of a complete RDNA 2 versus the PlayStation 5 GPU halfway point matter? Probably. By a lot? Unknown. Let us wait for the games. As for the games over time, I think the raw flop and bandwidth will matter the most at first, though as the other features should prove limited just to the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series X. They require dedicated reprogramming to take advantage of, and multi-platform games do not always spend the resources to do that, unlike a faster GPU which is just faster. So here we have Alex, I think what he's saying is that the GPU just being faster on the Xbox Series X 
Apex is going to produce better multiplayer games. I also believe that he's saying that if developers use all of the feature set of the Xbox Series X GPU, that multiplayer games should also look better running on the Xbox. He also says that he does believe that the PlayStation 5 has a halfway point of RDNA 2, just like what I've been saying for so many months on this channel. Now, this is a respected source, so you guys don't have to take my word for it. This is Digital Foundry. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about all of this. You already know my thoughts on this. The Xbox Series X is full RDNA 2 hardware. It is a more capable GPU than that found in the PlayStation 5. It has more features. It's more powerful. Games should look and run better on the Xbox Series X. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.